Ron Diffler from the Johnson Space Center, and we're here with Robonaut at the IEEE conference in St. Paul, Minnesota. And we're demonstrating right now the robot's ability to identify objects by segmenting a scene and then picking up those objects and putting it in a storage container. So we're going to put a few more objects out right now so you can see that demonstration. Is this autonomous or teleoperated? It's autonomous. We started with the goal of using the same tools and interfaces that a person has to use because we want to help the crew perform their task. GM's interest was also having the humanoid dexterity so they can help their factory workers who do fatiguing and um, sometimes difficult tasks, ergonomically difficult tasks. So we only give the robot as much torque as it needs to perform the task. So as it, it's going to move right now, I'm going to show how easy it is just to stop it because its compliance and its limited torque make it very comfortable to work around. I can easily restrain it and I can move it around. This is one of the things that makes it most comfortable to work around. So humans and robots working together. And this is, this is actually the basic way in which the robots control. We have an impedance controller. That is, we set the stiffness of the arms, and then we limit how much torque it can generate. So if it comes in a situation where it's inhibited by the environment, it only exerts so much torque. That's still a reasonable level of torque. It won't damage anything, and it won't be uncomfortable when it comes in contact with the person. The, what I just showed you, the compliance, the basic way in which the robot's commanded and controlled. Normally you have, with an industrial robot, at what's called an e-stop switch, if you have to shut the robot down immediately. On space station, we don't have to use an emergency stop. We actually have a motion stop, which the crew can use at their discretion. But we've actually built the motion stop into the robot. So if for some reason, it comes into contact with something abruptly, or the crew person actually wants to stop it from whatever it's doing because they had programmed up a sequence and they made a mistake and it was supposed to go to the left and it went to the right, all they have to do is dis to disable the robot, which you can see it's currently enabled by these lights. Just give it a slight nudge and it turns itself right off. Do you envision robot not being primarily autonomous or primarily teleoperated or? We, we give it the full range of capability. Um, autonomous we use for those tasks that are very well defined and the robot can perform without a lot of supervision. Then we have supervised autonomy. That's where their tasks are a little more complicated. You can program a lot of it, but sometimes there's issues that can pop up where the crew or the ground people have to then um, adjust the robot's behavior. Now if you have a task that's very poorly defined, like say some, uh, something was damaged on station and we don't have a perfect model of what things look like now because it was damaged, then having a crew person don the teleoperation gear and control the robot allows us to deal with that, those uncertainties directly, basically mating the very flexible human intelligence with the robot's capabilities. Move it up and out. Let's get nice and Still have a hand left. Okay. That's the idea.